Hello. Hello. We are doing a project on theology for religion. Okay. And we have a few questions. Good afternoon. This is Catholic Nation. We're your hosts, McKay Burnett and Emily Copeland. And we have a great show for you today. First, we're going to discuss the pro-life march. Let's go to Mary Strange to fill us in. The pro-life march is an annual event that advocates the repealing of Roe v. Wade, the court case in 1973 that legalized the killing of babies in the womb. They march on January 22nd, the day that the case was closed in the Supreme Court. This is the single largest human rights movement in the world where hundreds of thousands of people march from the Washington Monument to the Supreme Court building. Back to you, McKay. Thank you, Mary, for that wonderful report. Now to Michael Abbott, our field reporter, joining some pro-lifers on the scene. Hello, I'm Michael Abbott, and I'm here with Audrey Kenny of Washington, D.C. for the Pro-Life March. Audrey, what do you think of, what, what inspired you to come on this trip in the first place? I was very inspired to go on this trip because I think this trip helps inspire younger women and families to help end abortion to save babies. Are you excited for what's going to come next, like for the rally and like the march itself? Yeah, I'm very excited. I've never been on a trip like this before, and I've never been in such a big amount of people. So I'm really excited. Awesome. Thank you very much, Audrey. You're welcome. I'm Anya, Alex, Maddie, Cece. Okay, where are you guys from? Peoria, Illinois. Yeah. Peoria, yeah. yeah. Alright, so I'm going to uh, ask you a couple of questions about the Pro Life March. Um, what are you most excited about the Pro Life? <laughs> Being able to actually make a difference, like it, like although it's just one person doing it, it still is. It's all of like while one person is combined together doing something to change it. Uh, what inspired you guys to go on the pro life march? Because it's one thing to say you're pro life, but it's another thing to do it. So I wanted to do it. Yeah. When my mom was in high school, she went every year. So I decided to go every year. So. Um, I guess something that inspired me is that when I was in. Uh, grade school, I, um, my stepmom had a miscarriage, and I saw the effects on it had just having a baby, you know, lost on its own, and I saw the effects it had on just by that, and I would really want to save a family and learn from that much baby. Um, how do you guys feel about the oncom oncoming snow weather? Do you think it will affect the market in any way? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we're, we're, we're not marching. We're not marching at all. Leave, yeah, we're leaving early, so we, we have to get out of here. We want to, but they won't let us. I think we should get airplane tickets. So we're go. stopping yeah. at the Notre Dame University on the way there because they do a small march as well, and mm -hmm. we're stopping there. Well, if we get a million retweets, we get to go. On yeah. March. <laughs> Mel a million, <laughs> million, million yeah. retweets. <laughs> By the time they see this video, yeah. Retweets. It's too late. Yeah. Retweet. Hashtag PND bus life. Yeah. <laughs> 2K life. 2K 16. Okay. Right. Well, thank you guys very much. I appreciate it. Yeah, no problem. Well, thank you. Thank you, Michael. We'll check in with this ongoing story throughout the program. Catholics make up 22% of the U.S. population, and yet they're one of the most misunderstood faiths. We asked people their thoughts on this major worldview to see some of these misconceptions firsthand. Our field reporters are on the case. When you hear the word Catholic, what comes into your mind? Uh, I was born and raised Catholic, so uh, a lot of um, uh, unity and respect goes into it, but there's a lot of uh, um, structure that I think of as well, uh, mainly because of how Mass is conducted. Um, definitely uh, a strong faith is what I think of as well. A lot of Catholics that I know are strong in their faith, um, especially my mom, my dad, my grandma. The Catholic's great. I love Christianity. What is your view on Catholicism? When you hear the word Catholic, what comes to your mind? Uh, born and raised a Catholic, still practice Catholic. My kids are baptized in the Catholic faith, and to me, the word Catholicism means all accepting all-encompassing of family and inclusion. And so you would say you um, have a strong relationship with God right now? Uh, I believe so, yes. Do you have any opinions on Catholicism or like what comes to mind when you think of Catholicism? Not really. Not really. <laughs> I guess 
I do know some people who are Catholic who are kind of, you know, hypocritical, I guess, I would say. But, and I have heard people being like, oh, it's creepy to go to confession. But, <laughs> I mean, other than that, I haven't really, I haven't really heard before. very many stereotypes. Now to follow up on these misconceptions, we go to Grayson Roten with our daily Catholic tenets. Today we are going to be learning how saints strengthen our faith. Communion with the saints, it is not merely by the title of the examples of the church, the memory of those in heaven. We seek rather that by this devotion to the exercise of fraternal charity, the union of the whole church in the spirit may be strengthened. Back to you guys. Thank you, Grace. I wonder if some of our interviewees know anything about the saints. Let's find out. Do you know about saints, or have you? Do you know why Catholics have saints? Because they died for their faith mainly, supporting Christ. Do you know? Um, why Catholics have saints? I don't and can you <laughs> name any saints off the top of your head? Is one like Benedict or something? No. There is a Saint Benedict. Yes, <laughs> Let's take a break from our normally scheduled programming to check back in on the pro-life march. How's it going, Michael? <laughs> Hello, I'm Michael Abbott, and I am here with Tony and Katie. Katie. Um, have you guys been on the march before? Yes. Yeah, this is my first time. Wow. <laughs> Are you guys excited for the pro-life march? Are you guys excited to be here? Absolutely. Who cares about the stress? Right, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, Are you excited for pro-life? Are you excited to be here today? Absolutely. Awesome. Uh, what inspired you to go on the pro-life march? Well, abortion is running rampant in our country right now, and I think it's over 50 million babies that have been killed so far. Um, have you guys been on the march before? Yes. Okay. Um, are you guys excited for the pro-life? Yes. Excited to be here. Yeah. yeah. And what inspired you to go on the pro-life march? Well, it's experience. Well, that was interesting. Now let's discuss something we all know a little more about, God. We asked some very important people what they thought. Okay, so do you know who Jesus is? Who is he? Uh, do you know what he looks like? So, do you know who God is? Who is he? He's God. Do you know what he looks like? What does he look like? <laughs> uh, do you know what an angel is? What's an angel? A statue? Um, so, do you know who God is? Who is he? What is... Who is he? Jesus? Uh, do you know what an angel is? <laughs> do you know what a saint is? Okay, and do you know what heaven is? Oh, what does heaven look like? Um, it, ha it, it has all kinds of stones for, for people die. Oh, okay. There's one back there in the graveyard. Back there. Oh. I saw it. You saw it? And... Do you, uh, what can you do for someone else that's good? How can you help someone? Um, by calling an ambulance. By calling animals? No, ambulance. Ambulance. Ambulance, okay. Yeah, because my mom works in ambulance. Oh, that's cool. And one time when I was sick, she helped me. She helped you? That's good. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Do you know who Jesus is? Do you know who God is? Who is he? The Holy Spirit? Okay, do you know what love is? No? Um, what, can you name a way that you can help someone? 
so you can. That you can help them, that you can do something good with someone. No? Do you know what a saint is? Okay. And then, uh, do you think God loves you? Yes? Okay. Good. Thank you. Do you know who Jesus is? Who is he? Go oh, asking him questions. Just a minute, please. What? Yeah. Go show Miss Patty. He's God. He's God? Who is God? God is Jesus. Uh, does Jesus love you? Do you love Jesus? Do you love Jesus? You do? Do you love Jesus? And what is a saint? You don't know? Okay. And what is a way you can help someone? Hug them? Okay. Thank you. Okay, so do you know who Jesus is? Who is he? Jesus? Who is he? A boy. A boy? Okay. Um, do you know what he looks like? No. Um, do you, uh, what is love? When you what? When you hug yourself? Okay. That's all we have for you this afternoon. Thanks for watching. We have been McKay Burdett and Emily Copeland on Catholic Nation. Peace be with you and with your spirit. Cinnamon, I present. What can I help you with today? Well, I'm pregnant and I don't know what to do. Very understandable for a woman of your condition, and it's all right to be nervous. I personally had a wife that was pregnant as well. But anyway, there are many uh, particular options for your condition. One, you could possibly give her up for adoption, or two, you can choose to keep your child. But what are you personally considering? Well, I think I'm going to consider adoption. It's a very good choice, and I have a cousin that did the same thing. <laughs> Many women regret having abortions. The only decision a woman should make is to be pro-life. So please, make the decision to choose life. Thank you. Good evening and welcome back to Catholic Nation. I'm Sorali Rios. And I'm Sammy Tilly. Earlier this evening, we had a field reporter head out around town and ask some religious questions. Now we're going to have our field reporter, Patrick Fair, ask the people about their opinion on same-sex marriage. <laughs> going on security wise but that didn't stop our reporters from getting the news so now we're going to hear from our field anchor Bailey Wolf Bailey what happened out there even though we had some problems we managed to get some good answers from people um, the Catholic answers to the questions are that abortion is never okay and that life begins at conception we can't wait to hear about that thank you Bailey Okay, and last question, um, what is your opinion on abortion? I'm totally pro-choice. Do you have a reason? Or? I just feel like, I and mean, yeah, they're stupid for getting pregnant if they don't want one, but there are some cases like rape and incest that, you know, it's not their fault. They kind of need to have a choice in that matter, <laughs> so. Yeah. And in other cases, it is a woman's body, so, and if she's not ready. And have you heard the statistics where uh, people that have gotten abortion not only regret it, but it also has 
many more negative side effects than having a baby ever would. Do you have any opinion on that? I do not. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Have a good day. And about uh, abortions, are you guys pro-life or pro-choice? Pro-choice. 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 Alright. I'm pro um, selective. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, Kelly, do you want to ask like another question is, are you pro-life or pro-choice? Or are you familiar with anyone? Uh, I'm not really familiar with anyone else. Okay. Pro-choice is just like, you think that women should have like, have the choice to have abortions. And, like Planned Parenthood. Yeah, and Planned Parenthood. And pro-life is just, you don't think that's right. Uh, I'm not the one you said first. <laughs> I forgot what the one was. The pro-choice? Pro yeah. Okay. Do you know why? Do you think the father of the child should have rights also? Like, should have a say in whether yeah. or not? You do? Why do you think so? Because uh, there's a decision two people gotta make for uh, a life for somebody else, so I feel like everybody's gotta be at the same point. Um, do you think that everyone has the right to die at one point? Like, has the right to cho like choose what time they should be able to die, like euthanasia and stuff like that? Mm. Okay, we're here deep on me. I ain't scared. <laughs> <laughs> I know. <laughs> um, uh, I don't know. I don't know what to say, though. They don't have an answer for that one. Um, okay. So, what do you think that Catholics say about like people that are gay or transgender and stuff like that? What do you What do you think their impression is of that kind of stuff? Uh, I have no idea because everybody got different point of views whether whether what they believe in or not. So I can say about that one. Everybody's different. Do you have a belief on any of that stuff? I mean, as long as everybody's happy, I don't see nothing wrong with it. Okay, I think that's it. All right. Thank you. All right. Welcome back. And now we're going to have Maddie Waller join us in the studio and answer a few of our questions. Good evening, Maddie. Where did you meet up and ask a few questions? Hi. I went with a group of reporters to the U of L campus. We discussed Catholic stereotypes, what they thought about the Catholic faith, what they already knew, and if they had any questions. What sort of answers did you get? We got a variety of answers. Some people didn't know anything about the Catholic faith, while others knew a lot. Others really surprised us with what they already knew. The main difference was how much people prayed. Luckily, we got the answers sorted out and people a little bit more educated on the faith. That's great. Thank you for your time, Maddie. <laughs> now we're going to take a minute to talk about Pope Francis. The Pope has recently declared 2016 the year of mercy. Now our expert, Caitlin Moore, is going to inform us about the upcoming year. A year of jubilee is proclaimed by the Pope whenever he wants the church worldwide to focus on forgiveness and healing a special way. The Year of Mercy is an invitation to love, kindness, and generosity. This year, Pope Francis challenges us to seek God within our own mercy. Thank you. Back to you. The ritual opening of the Holy Door of Mercy in the Basilica of St. Peter marks the official start of the Jubilee of Mercy. I personally got to experience this at my local church. The door there is now an official Holy Door of Mercy, which anyone who enters will experience the love of God. Thank you for joining us tonight on Catholic Nation. Until tomorrow, peace be with you and with your spirit.